Morton is in training for a marathon walk. But although he may look like any other sprightly grandfather, Peter's special. He's battery operated, plugged in from the head, and lucky to be alive. To be able to go back just to walk around the local reservoir or the, or the duck pond, you know, is a, was such a joy. And it still is a joy. I can't, I can't stop feeling it. And I, I want to sort of spread my arms and lift them in the air, you know, and it feels good. But just months ago, Peter had chronic heart failure. Doctors told him he was days from death. His only chance of survival was a heart transplant. But with kidney problems, he wasn't eligible. The church came and gave me last rites so that if I died any time, it was likely, because in that condition, you just pass away one day. Um, so that it was, you know, all done. But Peter was lucky. A friend told him about Stephen Westby at the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford. The pioneering heart surgeon was looking for a guinea pig to test a new heart pump. He felt Peter was the ideal candidate. He'd come to the end of the road. We felt that even though he was going to be a very high-risk candidate, he may not survive the operation at all, we should try. This is really because when you first test uh, something uh, new like an artificial heart, you really have to offer it to people who have absolutely no alternative. It was funny, it was my GP that made up my mind for me. She said to me, Peter, what have you got to lose? You might die and save yourself the misery of dying, she said, in the operation. And if you, if you live, that might be very precious. So I thought, to hell with it, I'll do that. inventor prepared to fly to Britain for the operation. Robert Jarvik's electric heart pump had never before been used permanently. It was a medical first. This is the Jarvik 2000, the miniature battery-powered turbine that promises to revolutionize cardiac medicine. The Jarvik 2000 is a very dramatic departure from the past artificial heart technology because it's so small and so simple. It's completely silent. It's completely portable and it has a, a very novel method of avoiding infection. Okay. The pump fits inside the heart and is connected by a cable under the skin to a power socket on the head, the pedestal. The scalp is extremely resistant to infection. So the cable goes inside the patient, underneath the skin of the neck, actually to the skull, where this is attached under the skin to the back of the head. The heart pump helps the damaged heart, supporting it and helping it to heal. Two weeks after his first visit to Oxford, Peter's life-saving operation began. The first step was to screw the pedestal into his skull. It's complex and high-risk surgery. The heart bypass machine kept him alive as Stephen Westby inserted the pump into his heart. And there you see the Jarvik 2000 actually uh, in the apex of the heart. The heart is then defibrillated so that it begins to beat again. Within days, Peter was back on his feet with the pump propelling blood around his body. And after just five months, his own heart staged a miraculous recovery. It clicked back into its normal rhythm. Both doctor and patient are thrilled with the results. Hi, Steve. Hello, Peter. I'm still here, you see, thanks to you. <laughs> nice to see you. And Come you. in. Peter, let's have a look at the pedestal. Uh, as you know, uh, we felt that this was a very clever way of bringing power into the body. But as far as you're concerned, is, is it obtrusive or do you not notice no. it? I don't notice it. Occasionally when you turn over in bed, you, you, you notice it. And occasionally when you're out, someone asks you what's that thing in your head. With a battery that's portable, carried around with him in a bag, Peter now leads a relatively normal life, a life he never expected to have. He's writing a book to share his amazing experience with others. The Jarvik 2000 is still in clinical trials, but medical experts agree 
the heart pumps like this could soon become a lifesaver for millions. Devices like this will be used to treat heart failure routinely in five to ten years' time. Originally, a pacemaker was virtually the size of a washing machine and an external device. Now we put pacemakers into premature babies and people in their 90s. My feeling is that in 10 years' time, the same will apply to these small, user-friendly artificial hearts. With his new lease of life, Peter's in training for a 91-mile sponsored walk to raise money for other heart patients. But there is one drawback to being battery-operated. He'll have to regularly take time out to ensure he doesn't run out of power. So everywhere you go, whatever you do, you've got to take your, your battery pack with you. It's irritating, but you get, I mean, let's face it, the alternatives work.